This video is going to be an analytical review of the exotic mission Whisper of the Worm. The reason for this video is that Bungie has stated they're going to be having two exotic missions returning, past missions, to the rotator playlist when um, into the light drops. But they haven't said which ones they are. People are 90% certain overall that it's going to be Zero Hour and Whisper, but some people are also saying that they're maybe only going to give us Zero Hour and then maybe Harbinger or Bad Juju. I think they just need to go all in with Into the Light and give us Zero Hour and Whisper, the two coveted missions. I don't think we were bothered about Harbinger. I'm not. I'm not bothered about Harbinger and I'm not bothered about Bad Juju. I am bothered about maybe crafting them. Yeah, maybe. But I, that, I can put that on the back burners. I'm more interested in playing Whisper again and Zero Hour. I've done an analytical video of Whis uh, of uh, Zero Hour already, and that video done well. That's why I'm saying I'm doing a Whisper one. So <clears throat> let's see what they announce tomorrow. If Whisper's not on the list, then this video is going to be disregarded. But if it is on the list, then pay attention to this video because it's going to go into enemy spawns and a retrospective outlook or view on the mission. And what it was like back then. So this was a Titan run from me. The heroic version. So Whisper had Normal. Which was done on IO via a public event. And then you opened a portal up. Then once you've done all that. You unlocked Heroic. Heroic is equivalent of Legend. I think people get confused when I say Heroic missions. They think I mean Hero, hero Nightfalls. Hero Nightfalls is not the same as a Heroic Exotic Mission. Heroic refers to legend. <clears throat> so if you if you hear the word legend nowadays, like legend presage, legend this, it's the same name as heroic. It means the same thing. It means the more difficult version of the mission. That's all it means. To state with the Whisper mission, there was a very interesting modifier that come with the heroic version that states this. Blighted Hunger. Grants bonus damage in the Whisper Heroic activity based on fight on the fire team's leader's Whisper Catalyst objective progress. So if you were 33% or whatever, and you got a hundred or so you got a hundred percent, you're doing more damage. So it, this mission was really good because you could over-level it in a sense, but not in the traditional sense of um a higher number. It was that, well, no, the stuff that you do in the mission makes you more powerful. This is this is basically showing you, it was basically a good little power creep, but not like over power creep, but just a sense of mastery. This was fantastic. A, a great modifier. They should have this modifier <clears throat> for any sort of mission that comes with a new exotic and there's a catalyst link to it. It should have this type of modifier with it as it's a sense of mastery. So this time and what we're using. So this was my first Titan uh, heroic solo, by the way, on the Whisper. This was my first, um, I believe it was, my first solo flawless, so that means no death. So we're using Sunbreaker, Top Tree Titan, which is not the same system as what we have now. Top Tree Titan was Melting Point. So if you played day one, there was a little, little uh, thing called Melting Point where you could debuff enemies with a melee ability. They brought it back for D2, but they called it Hammer Strike, and it was the shoulder charge ability, and it weakens enemies on Solar Titan. They need to bring this back. If they want to give competition to Mini, Fro and Hammer, they need to bring Mountain Point back attached to only Hammer Strike so that you can make a decision based on if you want to debuff enemies or if you want invincibility with the healing. And then that's going to diversify your Solar Titans. Bottom Tree was Sunspots. Just to let you know, the meta in 2018-17 was not Sunspots. Not for the not for stuff like this. It was debuff, hammer strike. Top tree hammers done way more damage than bottom tree. There was benefits to sunspots and it did come it was good in some senses, but like no, you wanted to use hammer strike. So just to know that that wasn't the wrong choice. We're using better devils, mananan, and whisper with full catalyst. So we're doing maximum damage in this due to the blighted hunger modifier or whatever. We also had different elements of guns. Right, I've got Solar Covered. I need Void and Arc because there are all three elemental shields. We used Lion Ramparts for the Jump Buzzle and Simperceps for general gameplay on a Titan. Right, so we'll skip along a little bit. So this is the opening of the mission. 
Now, just starting off with this jump right here, people would struggle with this, on, especially on a Warlock. Or a Hunter would be fine as long as you've got Stompies, but a Titan would absolutely zoom. You grant, you greet you with a, a Blight. Blights are a main component of this mission, so you have to kill the Blight straight away and then drop down, and then you'd be greeted with the Puzzle. Now, because I'm using Lion Ramparts, I could do a lot of skips. Now, as this mission went along, people understood that you could Titan fly the entire puzzle. Just bear in mind, when I made this video, I wasn't aware of the Titan flying for the entire jumping puzzle. So this video was organic from a long time ago. But at the time of me posting it, it had all the jump skips, which you're seeing here. I'm actually jump skipping. Some people, if you've never seen the Whisper mission, it's basically... These, these platforms, but they're all over the walls. I'm actually skipping loads of them. So that's 20 seconds saved by just doing the jump we did there. This jump's really difficult to do, but with high jump like that, just being able to jump, right, almost float around in like a warlock. So good. And then with another skip here, this is saving time as well because we're, we're skipping over the right-hand side, which you can't even see. Jumping in and out like that was also difficult, but Lion Ramparts again made it easy. We were waiting for an elevator. Get on. And then we'll go to the next part. I'm not showing you all the chest locations and stuff like that, which well, there obviously is a lot of that. Uh, but in this particular run, I didn't do that. We then got a death pit here, which was a risk, of course, but the goal was just to keep running through. Then this section... The boop walls that were all, the darkness walls that we're all uh, used to at this point. Titan being class at this, just skipping the entire puzzle, just the entire three uh, ledges there. Nice mantle. Snipers would spawn, but you wouldn't waste your time. Obviously, it's a time mission at 20 minutes. So every time save you could do would help you get more time for the bosses, which ultimately that is your main goal to get time skips. On anything that you can do. It wasn't speed running, it was playing efficient to the mission. That's what that that's what this is. So this exit area was always the same, it was always the back portal, interestingly enough. But the other there was more check there was chests and stuff back there as well. And this this room here was really good at jump puzzle. You would jump all the way around the room. To then pick up a chest, I believe. Really good. So now Zol starts talking. See, Zol, people call Zol and say, oh, Zol wasn't that good. That's because he was in a strike. But let's just imagine for one minute the Zol strike was a Grandmaster Nightfall. The all rotation of uh, Grandmasters with the resilience nerf. Imagine how difficult that would be. There was nowhere to hide in that strike. There was bits and pieces, but imagine it. So I give Zol a lot of credit. People don't. People say, oh, he's a strike boss. Well, that's because you're listening to mainstream people. Zol was well designed because he's the only boss that looks and behaves like that. There's no other type of worm boss that acts like that where you play around the arena to the boss. The only room, the only boss that I can think of really is like that is the new Wallard's Room one, but that's just the meatball from Gambit. That's not... Uh, genius design, the platforms are, but yet the, the design of the boss isn't. So this opening room, you agree with blights, snipers. It was important that we kill the snipers quickly because the room can get out of hand with the darkness walls. So that's why you can see um, we're focusing that. So this ledge was a good place to start with the snipers. And obviously the captain we need to take down because he's going to eat your time. You may as well have called him the knight, the, ti the time eater. Because these knights in this, the solar knights and the darkness wall ones would just eat up your time and you would lose your solo entirely because of these. Next sniper, if we can get our crit, then it's going to save times. Because um, we do a massive damage, of course. If it was body shot, we won't. The next goal would be to take down the, the scions. So we're going to round them up. Because we don't get many nades, so we better use it good when we get when we do use it. And then we try and kill out all the sounds. After a portion of sounds are killed, 
you then get the next wave. This is when we would use super. This is the best case scenario to use it because this is the hardest phase. Because there's tons of knights and there's tons of snipers and stuff. Just using that there, look at how quick it ran out. It ran out really quick, but the damage it did was really good for the for each day. Right. Um just having the melting point as well. Really good for blight damage. You needed to consider blight damage. This is why we've got explosive payload weapons on to kill blights quicker. Nowadays, you've got things like Bastion, one shot and blights, Fawn, you've got Black Talon, Anarchy, stick, stick um, all, the, uh, all the blights with Anarchy, you kill them quickly. So there's all sorts of different options, but then you just had explosive payload weapons, that's it. Or maybe you rocket them, but that was risky. So we're managing the room. You can see how we're managing the ads. We're, we're using cover. Covers of, of utmost importance. We don't have restoration. We've got our guns and a hope, and that's all we have. This Vandal has been annoying, so we're going to have to push. You'll notice the AI is cranked up as opposed to what normal was. Our melee whiffs. This causes a wipe, almost. Not a wipe. It's flawless, but almost. Don't take down the blights in this room, by the way, unless they change things. You just kill the adds. That then spawns darkness wall, and then you come ag up against the ambush room, I would call this. If you stay at entrance, you will get pelted. And if you don't have a super or something, you will just get mashed. So my strategy was always to loop around to this area. It was a little risky, but if you, it would pay off if you got here, because it meant that you could kill... The enemy's easier because they kept putting up their bubbles and then get the melee um captain we're going to use some heavy here just to melt him we won't be able to get a crit bear in mind you can't get crits behind shields if the, if an enemy is shielded it's only body shot damage you do so sometimes we would use whisper as a shield piece and weapon because that's just what would be better to do because the solar any solar targets in this was was, was crazy now this is room two so room two was difficult because of this solar knight here. You'll be rewarded if you could kill him quickly though. The quicker you kill him, the better it is. Because then you can push up and start on the next solar knight. So it will grant you area control of the room. It's so good. How this was designed is that it's not just a case of going in there mindlessly like throwing a hammer and stuff. There was actually like a lot of strategy on like, well, kill these enemies first. And there was different ways of doing it. And depending on what class you were on, depending on how you would do it and have an efficient time output on each room. You would also, like I said, the knights, the time eater knights, they would eat your time up and hide and then push and then hide. The shield will go down and then you'd have to push them and then you might wipe because you've overcommitted to try and kill them. Etc. This is a nifty angle of trying to get the goblins. There's a couple of goblins at the back of the map. Now, this little uh, circumstance here was really difficult because the soul, this solar knight I'm killing here with a super, which, by the way, only one super, and we just kill a knight and do half HP to a wizard. How times have changed now. We would literally melt the entire room with one super, but now, absolutely not. But even though it doesn't look that good, it is because the orange bars were really tanky then. Like, they really were like mini-bosses, almost. I mean, if you... Yeah, if you get a crit with Wispy, one shot, and fair enough. But, like, not with primaries and stuff. You was taking your time to kill them. Then there was this little ledge here as well. This gave us an angle to start working on some of the adds. A goblin there. Wait for retaliation blast. A lot was learned. When I was doing the old Whisper runs and um, missions like this... All the enemy AI patterns was learned then. And not a lot has changed in terms of like how taken enemies work. So taken enemies work the same as what they work now. The only difference is that they've got overlords. And they've got unstoppable champions. The overlords are basically goblin snipers from Vault of Glass. That's what barrier champions are based on. They're, remember Vault of Glass? You snipe, you're trying to kill the snipers and they kept regenerating health. From the, from the distance on conflux phase. Right, well, they took that idea and give it to barriers and made them immune for so long, but with a shield and dressed them up. So that's where barrier champions came from. It's from Vault of Glass. 
essentially the original goblins that would go immune. Right, slightly different, but it's a, it's a variation of that idea. Unstoppable champions were completely new. There wasn't really anything like an, uh, an unstoppable champion. Overlords were based off Minotaurs. Because what did Minotaurs used to do in D1? Teleport. All oh, right, well, that's what Overlords do now. So it's just a variation based off a of, uh, Minotaur. That's what the whole thing is based on. On that, Overlord taken snipers. They're based off Goblins. Like I said, they do retaliation blasts just like what a Goblin would do. Same mechanic. We melt and point the Blight. This would actually, in fact, Save us time, melt and point blights. We had to really strategize that because we want to kill a blight in one mag if we can, and that would allow us to do that. That is actually the prism that would make decisions on is being able to do things like that. Whereas now it's just like, well, you would be able to one shot them anyways with a special weapon, i.e., Bastion or a heavy weapon like Black Talon, or even do range damage with Fawn. When you took out two of the snipers, it's actually just two. It's not one, so I actually knew the difference. When the second is killed, you need to immediately back up and kill the phalanxes, lest you, they would boop you into a wall and physics kill you. This is absolutely true. So there was all these little niches to the run that you needed to know, and if you didn't, you were dead. This was a good little skip as well, being able to... Bypass those scions, which you could, but you needed to kill snipers to be rewarded with that skip. So now we're swapping to an arc weapon. So for those that don't know, in the original vanilla D2, you could switch elements on guns from arc, solar, and void. This was really handy on certain weapons that were used all the time, like Mananan and stuff. There was other guns as well, but Mananan was the main one that you wanted all three variants of to swap from. This is an arc-centric room, so if you notice, there's three main combat rooms with a jump puzzle. Room one, solar, right? Room two is void, acolytes, but it adds solar in it, but it's mainly void. Room three is arc. So good. So, like, each room had its own theme, and you had to sort of um, transition your place out a little bit to fit that room. Now we had to take out the phalanxes, those little cubby caves that you could hide on the right and the left good to know if you didn't know this this little phalanx phase was a lot more difficult we've got a super to use which believe it or not it was the better play to use a super on one of these enemies than it is on a boss because the, the payout of using a super on one of the mini bosses wasn't that great you could go in with the mountain point and then use a super but you would do maybe let's try and remember now Probably less than a third, probably a quarter HP, but then die once your super is done. But if you try and like pop it and then like run away, then your super is sort of a waste. So it would be, especially on a Titan solo run, it would be of no use for us to pop a super on them, is what I'm trying to say. But you've, you, you've got a lot of blights in this room. Now, if you leave blights up and kill all centurions, right, the blights will still be there and the boss is hiding the blights and you can't crit them. We'd, we'd whisper. So the strategy was to kill two centurions and then melt blights. That was it. Because that way you could control the room more. Now we are on less than, six, less than seven minutes, so you're thinking, well, is this the right play to start shooting the blights? It absolutely certainly is. Because if we get to boss phase and they hide in the blights, which generally the AI pattern of those bosses would want to do that, then you're screwed because then you've got to push the enemies and you will die. It won't matter if you die in terms of going to orbit, but you'll die and lose time. So this was the absolute pro strat of doing this room solo is that killing the two centurions and waiting for kill trigger. That is the point. There's kill triggers in the game. And that was a there's kill triggers still in the game today with certain things. If you do this, this happens. This was just a, a case of if you kill all these enemy types, you get the bosses to spawn in. All right, isn't it clever? Let's do a little bit of a uh, prep before we do that. We're not ready for boss yet. We are now, of course. The final blight we didn't take because I, I remember, if memory serves me correctly, the bosses don't go to the final blight at the back. So we're fine. So then we start DPS for the three mini bosses which basically they're named bosses, so they're actually bosses, not just VIP targets. So you'd be great with three. 
a uh, one that does his walls and teleports, almost like a Minotaur type thing, but with walls, take on walls, that is. You'd have a Solar Knight that does his solar. You would hope he does solar. And then the Phalanx that does arc damage and, do, and specializes in shield blasts. Well, that would be a non-factor because of where we're fighting. Do you notice we're at the back of the map? We're so far hunched to the back of the wall, none of the ads are fighting us. I'm going to show you the difference. So you see in the gameplay here, look, the, the bosses are not fighting us at all. We've taken out all the blights. Uh, I'm going to show you another video that most veteran players should be familiar with. So this is Slayerage, the first guy to do, I believe he got world's first Wizard of um, Heroic Solo. I believe he did. He was definitely the first, first person I saw upload this. So I, he hasn't put that in the title, but that was the case. But look at the difference. Bear in mind, Slayerage was a fantastic player. He was probably he was probably the player of that time in terms of like solo. He was the best. I will I will we'll go out and say I think he was probably the best at that time. Is he the best now? No, because he's not playing. He's playing something else, which is a damn shame. He should be playing. Let's pause this video and I'll show you the difference. So I'll just turn this audio up and you'll see the difference between what I did with the positioning and what he does, which yeah, I'm not taking it away from him. I'm just showing you the difference between fighting at the back of the map and not. So he's, he's taking out all the blights. This is the, this is the fir first person to do this, by the way. Six and a half minutes for, where is he? I think the sniper will be dead. You are kidding me! Oh, that's so inconvenient. I missed a set both times. I, apparently I missed a set a third time. Okay, this is the boss, right? No? Where's the boss then? So you you're the seeing the difference already. Already and he's struggling you're to find the boss. He's, he's struggling to... He's wasting ammo on the ads that he didn't need to really kill. Not that it's his fault, because this is the first run. Edgy... The, the runs get better and more refined by everybody because every, all the Thai players watch each other and take tips from each other, so the, re, the runs get refined. This is the raw footage of somebody doing it first, so I'm not taking it away from him. I'm just showing you the difference that this is crazy, right? The bosses have range drop off. You'll see. Goddamn bubble. That is... Inconvenient so doesn't do it justice. Blight. That is beyond so inconvenient. Kill the centurions and not take it out of the blights. This is a problem. Also, Midnight Coop, an example of Midnight Coop being worse than Battle Devils, because Battle Devils could kill Blights better, because Rampage doesn't really proc on a Blight. To go back and actually get rid of that thing, because he should be vulnerable if he just stays in my view. Don't go anywhere. Much more difficult to pull off. So I'm not going to play any much more of that, but it's more difficult to play like that as opposed to where I am. Again, I'm not turning away from him. This is something that I found out whilst playing. And I don't see anyone... I didn't see anyone doing it like this originally. Not to say that I'm the first to do it. I'm just saying that this helped me out massively on my flawless. It's just playing a little bit more passive. The bosses just stop. They have a cup of tea, they stop. So you can see, we're also managing our ammo. We don't need to go for heavy. Because obviously this is the OG Whisper with Grant and uh, White Nail. I can't mind if it was called White Nail. I think it was still called. I think it's still, it was still called that, wasn't it? I can't mind. Or was that Black Hammer? So the Solar Knight's pretty straightforward. Sometimes the Solar Knight would hide. And be more passive. That's why you need to melt down the solar knight. The phalanx was actually the most uh, awkward because he would keep rotating between this pillar. But look at how heavy. So we're good. Boss is below a third. That's because of the buff that we're getting from blighted hunger. So well, look, less than three minutes. So we're comfortable at this at this phase. That's just with known information in advance and strategizing. And the room's less busy. Look at that. What was that? Six. Take it back. Six IO tokens for a solo flawless. That you would get that if you didn't, uh, if you already had Whisper. So that's an example of that. 
That was obviously with the double primary. When you got a special weapon, though, it was all different. So this is showing you when we had special weapons unlocked. So I could do whisper damage, like so. This is a different type of run, but this is with a. This is when I had a, a kinetic sniper on. Hopefully, I end up using the kinetic sniper in a minute. Same strategy is what I'm saying is, is is just pushing back. The whole strategy will be different now in today's sandbox. It probably revolving you be uh, be putting a well down and stuff like that. Like look at that we were able to then do like other sort of damage. This was obviously when they put the special weapon system in when Forsaken happened. So that's giving you the information, the analytical review of Whisper of the Worm. Let's hope that we get it. I'm not saying that we're gonna get it. Um we don't know per se, but I think if they, on the stream tomorrow, they need to just get, go ahead and give us a whisper and a zero hour. I couldn't pick, pick between the two on which one I would prefer in the game right now because they might save one for a later episode. I don't want them to save. I want them just to go all out and give us um, both missions because th these, the, the, these are the most important ones. And I think if they give us it all, it doesn't mean that we're going to stop playing because... There's so much variation with the missions that you can play them every time it comes up. And it's an exotic rotator playlist, bear in mind. So you can't play the mission constantly. It'll be it'll come within rotation every now and then. So I think it's fine to give us both. That was a video on this. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.